Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland on this very blustery day near the end of August and all I can say is that I am so glad I've had my greenhouse through this really wet and windy and stormy summer that we've had. It has been my, my sucker, my inspiration, my support. So with that in mind, I am now going to show you around the greenhouse here at the end of August. We are going to have a look at plants that are in bloom and give an update generally on many things. I have so many really, really big leaf things to show you. So let's get on with the video. We are going to start off the greenhouse tour here on the step and I hope you can hear me well enough because it is very windy and I have some plants that don't quite fit in the greenhouse. They sit out here and they help invite people in and the first one that I must show you there is my Robinson Crusoe palm over on the left. That giant with the cabbage like leaves that is just has just gone from strength to strength since I potted it on. The only disadvantage is it's going to need to be potted on soon again. And directly up from my Robinson Crusoe palm we have Fuchsia Boliviana which is kind of coming to the end of its flowering now at this stage. <laughs> you can see that actually some of the blooms have fallen off and they are here on Robinson's leaves but very pretty flowers and very unusual. Moving up again from them, at the back, we have my Sparmania tree, which is in full flower. So I guess, let's go in. So we just came from out there. There's the Sparmania tree kind of fluttering in the breeze. And just on the inside alcove of the greenhouse, we have a lot of really big leafed plants. And I'm quite proud with how this has turned out this year. I have a lot of really gorgeous things here. This is the second of my Boliviana fuchsias. Swinging over, we have papaya leaves there in the background. This is the mountain papaya. We have Canna musifolia, which is that one just there. And then if we move up, more of the paya leaves there, we get a glimpse of the Tibuchina in flower. Spermania leaves, of course, on the right. So if we start down here with the tomato tree, with his gorgeous, gorgeous leaves and just move up where we have the papaya and the fuchsia, tibuchina and sparmania with its tall white flowers. And just to give you an idea, if I swing over here, then we have that big brugmansia, which is making a few flowers at the moment and the begonia here on the right, which really could do with some water. And then directly down from them, don't mind that string there, that string is just for my tomatoes. But here we have the Albizia tree, which you saw its flowers in the last video. We have some Brogmansia flowers. Over here by the door. And then if I continue over here, there are a few more. It's not covered in flowers, but there's a smattering of flowers. And there are those strings again, which are on the tomatoes. I have three tomato plants here in the greenhouse growing up strings. And of course, it's Jessie. And any of you have seen my last video on <laughs> the unboxing of my codex plants will recognise her. 
and here are some of my tomato plants and of course the background the courgettes or zucchini and I can tell you this is the last year I'm going to grow vegetables in the greenhouse there's just too much white fly and I can't be risking my collection someone asked for an aroid update and where better to start than with this giant alocasia here in the pot that is just going from strength to strength this is one that likes to sit in water and actually it's not sitting in water at the moment so I will top it up the minute I've finished but it has grown so so enormous this year since I have started just giving it loads and loads of water in fact I'm a bit scared now at this stage what I'm going to do with this plant next because it has grown so much I potted it on twice this year now this was grown from berries six years ago and it's just this year that it's really gone swoosh so as I said I've potted it on this year and this is the biggest pot I can really have it in but if we look down here you can see that already it's pushing roots out from the base so it should go into a bigger pot but it can't I was thinking to actually plant this in the border permanently but it presents certain problems because this plant it needs to be kept wet and the border isn't completely you know it, it, it's not wet so I don't know what to do oh there's another aroid down there and you really have to love the leaves on aroids so look at the way that these leaves present this kind of curvy fish hook or whatever there and then the leaves come off it and they're just so pretty so they've got great leaves long after they flower which has got to be a bonus and directly behind it is one of my amorphophallus so <laughs> it's not the biggest one but they haven't done great the stems of both of these plants of course are quite attractive with their mottledness this is my biggest Morphophallus konjac and I have had, obviously I've had them flowering size before this one didn't flower but hopefully next year trying to keep them well fed and watered and maybe it'll make a very big bulb this year so moving away from the Amorphophallus and the Alocasia we have the staging over here where a lot of smaller plants are displayed and I have to show you just down from there something that's looking really good and here we have my Justitia and I love these big pink plume like flowers so so pretty like many of the greenhouse plants this was potted on this year and it certainly benefited from it I think actually I've been keeping this one in too dry a mix it does like its water and it's one that's going to droop if anything in the greenhouse is going to droop so I need to have it in a less well drained mix I guess moving up from the justitia to the top of the shelving you can see that I have well a lot of succulents and stuff looking well at the moment it's not been a great year for pelagoniums I do have a few in flower but compared to how they might normally look I guess it's just the lack of sun and the damp that they really don't like this one called tomboy has lovely dark flowers and that's done reasonably well this year but not as well as it could do and Arden's is still in flower can you believe it it's flowered for so very long really really pretty flowers and I think that that is going to be oh no we have another spike up there another head of flowers but that should be it now for this year because I don't want it to exhaust itself so just moving down now to the area where I have most of my South African bulbs really certainly the summer dormant bulbs and I have a few things waking up 
And that's where I keep my Syningia, which you may see is that silver leafed one there. So let's go and have a look at that because I was asked specifically about that. So this is a bulb that goes dormant, a codex plant, which produces this structure above the surface of the earth. But it's meant to be leafy in summer. It's not meant to sleep during summer. And I think what happened is I made a mistake with it this year. So when it tried to wake up earlier on the season, I didn't tend to its needs so well. I didn't give it water and it decided to go back asleep again. So that's just something to bear in mind with the summer dormant bulbs that when they show signs that they want to wake up, you really need to respond to that by giving them water. So here we have them and as you can see I have a lot of things still asleep. We have the bouffant there on the left which is just waking up. Just a quick look at my bouffant, my curly leafed bouffant which is uh, doing well but rather slow. Nice codex bulb there and down here we have gladiolus tritus which were repotted recently and are sending up shoots. And just over here I have to show you this. So this is Scylla madarensa, which this one has I grew from seed I collected in Madeira ooh, a good few years ago and this one is in active leafy growth doing really really well. But the other two pots even though I repotted them and saw that they were actively growing they just haven't come up yet. So <laughs> I don't know, just lazy. And of course, Cymbidium orchids there on the right. Ugh, it's very, very blowy outside. Don't like that at all. This plant here, which I featured gosh not very long ago it really doesn't look like it wants to flower this year although so much leafy growth <sighs> I guess the Irish weather just isn't the same as that of Brazil I really hope that this would be the year that it you know showed me its glorious crimson flowers but no so we have flying pigs down here and can you see Boo Boo up there on the left there she is Boo Boo's greenhouse you know and now we have another requested update and this is the euphorbia that you saw me rescue a year and a half ago when I bought it and the base was already rotting and we did a bit of surgery on it. Now as you can see the plant has done really well. It doesn't normally live here in the greenhouse, it's indoors but I just brought it out for the update because it's a big old prickly thing that's hard to fit into the greenhouse and not end up with spikes in my arms. It's a plant that could be in the greenhouse in summer but needs to go in in the winter because it needs a 10 degree minimum. As you can see from the top, it really is very triangular in its presentation. It does have a lot of charm, but I'm not sure I'm completely sold on this plant. Some nice succulents up here. This one here is looking really quite pretty at the moment with its mass of uh, growth on top. I don't know if it's about to flower. It's very good and obviously that echeveria there has flower spikes on it. Further along the staging we have my echeveria compton carousel which has been repotted. So this has actually been well I suppose propagated I took off a big stem of it and put it in another container and hopefully I'll have two of them before very long. In fact the other one I think it has struck so I do have two of them. And just over here kind of to the right and behind we have a Syningia 
that is gearing up to flowering. I'm just going to take it out so we can see it a bit better. Oops. And as you can see, it has uh, buds which will produce yellow flowers before very long. And it's a pretty little thing. Very nice. I think it needs to be kept moist. Super thing. I'm going to put that back now. So down here past the Rhodohypoxis, and sorry if I keep mentioning this, but I'm just so enamoured by these little South African bulbs. If you keep deadheading them, they just go on flowering like all summer long. So wonderful. I'm going to have to get my hands on some more of them. Really, really taken with them. But I have to show you this Chrysula next door to it because it is looking really, really gorgeous at the moment. Isn't it super? And I really love how the green tips come here so the plant itself seems to be kind of like a, a pale kind of dusky silver green but the new growths I guess at the tips there are a very kind of acid bright green which is great. Oh and there's something I wanted to mention to you and it is this kind of fertilizer that I was asked to try out. So this was sent to me from the States from Texas and it's called Gorton Solution. Now it's not exactly a fertilizer but what it's supposed to do is to help your plants to absorb the nutrients from your fertilizers and make better use of them. So I've been using this for a little while in the greenhouse now and I tell you it's very very dark black. <laughs> it looks dangerous but that can only mean that it's doing plants good. So I'm using that at the moment and I will let you know how I find it as time goes on. Okay, time to just top off this monster here who's always thirsty. And I guess with that it brings me to the end of this video, this greenhouse update, which I found, hope you found useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up up and check back for other videos and if there's any particular plant or group that you'd like me to mention in another video please do mention it down below and if it's looking in any way decent <laughs> I might make a separate video about it. Okay thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.